Friendship, friendship family. We are so excited to be here this evening as we celebrate the word of the Lord. The Lord is certainly blessing us and we are certainly excited about it. Thank you so much for meeting us right here for our Wednesday evening Bible study as the Lord continues to download revelation and illuminate his word to us. The word is rich and ripe in our lives, and we are thankful for the blessings of the word that's upon our lives that allows us to engage in this time and season. Please tag and share a friend tonight as we engage in the word of the Lord. We thank all of our visitors for being with us tonight as we celebrate the word as rich as it is. It is full to our soul and nourishment to our hearts, and we are excited for what the Lord is doing in us, through us, and for us during this time and season. So please, let's engage in the word of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. And we ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, to continue to seal us in this shift that you have called us to in this season. We ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, for clarity of thought and precision of speech in the name of Jesus. God, as we celebrate this time and this turn, we ask you, oh God, to give us the wherewithal to do the assignment that's upon our lives as we praise you and give you glory in this time and season. Oh, Oh God, we ask you tonight to continue to break us through and break us forth for your will and for your glory. Now, Holy Spirit, have your way, for you are our divine teacher and an ever-present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, God, that your word is powerful and rich. And God, we thank you for the ability to digest what we have from the divine. So God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight our lord our strength and our redeemer let the church of the living god say amen Amen. We are certainly excited again concerning our lessons in the Lenten season. The Lord is certainly encouraging us and enriching our hearts and minds to do exactly what he has called us to do during this time of Lent. He has called us to set ourselves apart for his use and his glory, to consecrate ourselves that we may hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. So tonight in our lessons in the Lenten season, we are going to continue to extract from the lessons again in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 11 the lessons again in Jesus Christ and the riches of his experience again in this desert experience so tonight we understand that Jesus Christ had three temptations and as we continue to dissect and unpack this text, we understand that the Lord is beginning to stir up something rich inside of us. And he is asking us throughout this Lenten season to ask for direction, to continue to celebrate the transition that we are in, for he is moving us to a new place in him. We are in the middle of transition as we move towards, again, the end of this Lenten season, understanding the culmination of this moment is Resurrection Sunday. So we are in the middle of transition and we must stay focused and look to God who is the author and finisher of our faith. Tonight we are reminded that we have to prepare for our purpose. 
We must be pursuers of the plan of God and praise the Lord for the fulfillment and the manifestation of his promises that are yea and amen. So now again, beloved, throughout this transitory moment, God is moving us and repositioning us to a place of resurrection. He is pulling forth things that were lying dormant inside of us and asking us to go forth to be used in the ministry in which he has called us to. Throughout this Lenten season, he is reminding us to put hands to action, and we must move forward in the things that God has assigned to our lives. We are feeling fresh and refreshed in this moment, in this time. He is pushing us towards a new phase and a new place in him. He is asking for our spiritual development, reaping all the benefits of this moment, the benefits of the new start, and starting afresh, seeking first the face of God and all of his righteousness in the earth. So tonight, as we are reminded throughout the lessons in the Lenten season, God is shifting our awareness of the authority that we have through his word. But we must, beloved, tonight remember it is essential for us to do the brain work necessary to welcome the new states of mind that's needed for our future and the full fulfillment of God's promises in our lives. We are broadening our brains and we are tuning in into the depth of our intelligence that we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. Throughout this Lenten season, we are preparing to get psychologically ready for what is to come. There are great things that are on the horizon for us. And if we're honest tonight, we have the propensity to hijack our emotions in moments of anger or sadness or disappointment or unforgiveness, and the list goes on. That's why it is essential to consecrate ourselves throughout this Lenten season, because consecration would cause us to survey ourselves and make the necessary adjustments. We must, beloved, in this season, move beyond our behavior, move beyond our experiences, and never throw away our thinking capacity or thinking power. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. It is rich. It is powerful. And we are reminded that the Lord is very calculating, that he has plans for us, and we have to see Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And the Bible declares that all these things will be added unto us. That is God's nature and God's heart towards us, his people. So the Holy Spirit is very essential in this hour. It is a comforter, a teacher to lead us and guide us in the way that God is leading us to go. The Holy Spirit surveys all perceives all. And again, we do not want to squander what's about to transpire in our lives. That's a looking to the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ our Lord. So we're putting into context the lessons in the Lenten season, that the Lord is reminding us that he's causing us to move forward and break out in the things that he has called us to. So we are excited in this moment. But understanding as we extract the lessons in this Lenten season, that temptation will come. But we must resign tonight that although temptations may come, it is only a test. I need you to tag that tonight in our chat, that it is only a test. And again, we are extracting again in the lessons in the Lenten season. So here we are reminded there were three temptations of Jesus Christ. One, again, the first temptation, we understand he was led up into the wilderness to be tempted. I want to park there for a few moments, understanding, again, the setting and the set up during this time of temptation. Jesus was led up in the spirit, by the spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted. Again, after he was identified in the earth as the son of God, this was, I want you to catch this tonight, a very necessary and integral part of his ministry. That's why he had to be led up 
by the Spirit into the wilderness. Why? Because he was moving forward to the next phase of his ministry. So this story is talking about an encounter that Jesus Christ had with the enemy. The enemy attempted to get Jesus to put his own needs and potential concerns above the will of God. He wanted Jesus to act independently of our Father. He wanted Jesus to sacrifice his own secure future for the present. But Jesus met Satan's challenges by trusting God to do all things well, to do all things in his timing, in his own way, and with his result. I need you to tag that tonight, that we must meet the challenges of temptation by trusting Someone say trusting tonight, trusting in Jesus Christ our Lord to do all things well, all things within his timing, all things his way, and all things with his result. He understands what you're going through. But again, we have to extract again throughout this Lenten season that we must do things his way to receive his results. We are reminded that Jesus Christ was tempted to sacrifice his own principles, and catch this, for a short-term gain. That's good there. That we, beloved, go through temptation and trials that attempt to pull us away from the principles of God for a short-term gain or result. But we, beloved, we must follow the example of Jesus Christ our Lord by overcoming temptation through the trust that we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. How do we overcome temptation? It is through trusting even in the face of the enemy. So we beloved tonight, as we extract again the lessons in the Lenten season, we must remember the setting in which Jesus found himself in. Jesus had been just baptized with water. He was a young man ready to embark on his and in his public ministry. The enemy, catch this, he looked and he sought to destroy Jesus Christ before he was made public. <laughs> the enemy, if we're honest tonight, t tempts us on every side just when we are on the brink of something new. He attempts to tempt us when we are on the brink of a breakthrough. He tempts us when God is up to something and he is up to something good. He tries to derail us. But we understand that even in spite of the transition that God is reminding us to trust him. <laughs> In the midst of transition. That's good. Trust him in the midst of transition. Jesus was going somewhere. Tonight, God is reminding us that we're going somewhere. That he's taking us to the next level. He's taking us higher in him. These are lessons in the Lenten season. The enemy relentlessly tempted Jesus Christ as he looks to tempt us. He will seek to tempt us anytime, anywhere, under different circumstances, and in a variety of ways. But Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is reminding us in this setting that just at the brink of the next level, the Bible reminds us that God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's when he's tested. See, you're doing things God's way. You're executing your life according to the word of God. And God has said, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. But that's when we'll go through the test. So we're clear tonight, as we are extracting again from this text and, and learning lessons in the Lenten season, that Jesus was not out of God's will. 
He was not committing sin. He was just going through the test. <laughs> but given the nature of his ministry on earth, he was the antithesis. He was the total opposite, again, of the enemy. He is God. Aren't we excited tonight that Jesus Christ, he is the author and the finisher of our faith, that he is the greatest power and we shall not be defeated, that the enemy is defeated and God is exalted? That's the God that we serve. So again, we are reminded tonight that as we extract from this particular text and we sit in the tension of the setting, that there was such a remarkable contrast between where Jesus Christ was going in the earth. We understand that Jesus Christ, during this time and season on the earth, he was both human and divine. That he moved from a place of crowds to now a place of solitude and silence. When the spirit rests on him like a dove, now the spirit drives him into the wilderness. <laughs> the voice of his father said, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Now we're anointed, but going through an attack. <laughs> Help us tonight, Lord. We've gone through a series of trials, but trials come to make us what? Stronger. Trials come to show what we are made of. Trials, catch this, leads to triumph. I need you to tag that tonight, that trials lead to triumph. Lessons in the Lenten season. Again, we're extracting from the text, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Again, the temptation of Jesus. Again, anointed, but now attacked. Hmm. Water baptism then to the fire of temptation. Hmm. Going through the challenges that Jesus Christ went through, he endured hardship as a good soldier to demonstrate who he is in the earth, to demonstrate his godly character. So we are clear tonight as we extract lessons in the Lenten season. That the Holy Spirit is reminding us that he's putting us to the test. Not to prove God, but we are proving what's on the inside of you. <laughs> because God is the greatest power. He's our sovereign. He's our Lord. He's everything to us. But we are proving <laughs> that we have what it takes. The Holy Spirit is strong inside of us. So we are clear here in this text that everyone will go through some level of testing. Testing is certain. Jesus is giving us what we need to move forward and to go over or overcome the adversary. This is clear that Jesus Christ reminds us that we must build our spirit man, that we must depend fully on Jesus Christ our Lord. That here in the text, when we talk about and unpack the word tempted, I think it's very important for us to extract the meaning of temptation. To be tempted means to test or to try or catch this, to entice or attempt to entice. Or to acquire something that we find attractive, catch this, but we know to be wrong and not beneficial. <laughs> temptation comes again, to build us in our most holy faith. And we understand that we can make it if we trust in God. Someone must tag that tonight, that we can make it if we trust in God. 
So here we have three again attempts to move our Lord and Savior from his position and posture of majesty. To turn stones into bread. To cast himself off the temple. And number three, to worship the enemy. So here, we are reminded in verses three and four that the tempter came and said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered what it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What does that mean? The question arises, what frame of mind did Jesus Christ have when answering the question? His frame of mind was always devout and connected to his divinity. Here, his frame of mind was exceedingly humble in understanding that yes, he is divine, but here on earth, he understood his humanity. His mindset was, he had a blessed assurance of his position in the kingdom and understood that Jesus Christ, he is the greatest power. So therefore, he understood he could not be defeated. This is the mindset that we must have as Christians in the earth. That we have the Holy Spirit. We are filled with the power of God and we cannot be defeated. That we must stand firm to Jesus Christ. On the solid rock we must stand because all other ground is sinking sand. We must trust in God. So when the enemy asked Jesus Christ this question, if you are the son of God, the nerve of the enemy to challenge our Lord and Savior, he challenged him to prove who he was. He wanted Jesus to act out of timing for selfish purposes. He wanted Jesus to fall into the trap of temptation. He attempted to entice our Lord and Savior. But Jesus answered. See, we must have an answer. I need you to tag that tonight. I have an answer. <laughs> I have an answer. Jesus Christ answered. He said, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is written. What does that mean? He relied totally on the power and truth of God's word. That we, as Christians, we cannot battle as human beings. We cannot battle in our humanity. But we rebuke the enemy with the word of God. See, Jesus Christ is showing us here that we have access to power through the authority of the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word, <laughs> became flesh and dwelt among us. We have authority because of our Savior. So we don't battle in flesh. We don't battle in our carnality. We battle and we fight because we always win through the word of God. So here he lets scripture battle and defeat the enemy. And elaborated on his spiritual strength. Knowing that we have resources connected to our Messiah. That there is no weapon that's formed against us that can prosper. Why? Because the word of the Lord, the sword of the spirit, will fight for us every time. The word of the Lord. It is written. 
That's always our answer. So here, as we extract from this text, and we sit in this tension that's happening with our Lord and Savior, if we're honest, we know that Jesus, the text says, was hungry. Now, this could have been a weak moment for Jesus. It could have challenged him to move from trusting in God and moving into operating under his flesh. But Jesus Christ understood that we must, and catch this tonight, dine on the divine. I need you to tag that tonight. We must dine on the divine. <laughs> the enemy said, tell this stone to become bread. No, no, no. Our bread, our daily bread is the word of God. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We dine on the divine. That is our daily bread. So I think it's very important to extract here, again in this first temptation, that there was a response versus a reaction. I need you to tag that tonight. Response versus reaction. Now, a reaction is instant. It's driven by beliefs by biases and prejudice, prejudices, and again, of our unconscious mind. When we react to something, we do so or say so without thinking. Help us tonight. It is our unconscious mind that's moving or running the show. <laughs> but catch this, a reaction is based on the moment. It does not take into consideration the long-term effects of what you do or what you say. A reaction can be a survival technique. On some level, it can be a defense mechanism. Now, if we're honest, at times, <laughs> we react. Based on, I'm going to say this again, we are driven by our beliefs, our biases, and our prejudices, and driven by our unconscious mind. We do something or say something without thinking. God is challenging us tonight to respond versus react. Hmm. When we respond, yes, while technically a response is a reaction, but the difference is, and I need you to catch this tonight, a response takes into consideration the desired outcome of the interaction. Hmm. So Jesus <laughs> responded. <laughs> Jesus did not react. That's a lesson in the Lenten season. Jesus took into consideration the desired outcome of the interaction. Jesus, he could have declared, I am the son of God. That would be what? A reaction. He could have said, I'm Jesus Christ. That I perform miracles. But again, Jesus Christ, again, he responded and said, it is written. Therefore, the word of God is always the greatest power and we cannot be defeated. The word of God is always the most powerful antidote of any temptation. Come on and say, it is written. Relying on the word of God is essential. The word of God is our greatest weapon against the enemy and Satan and any temptation. We understand, beloved, that we use the word of the Lord 
to remind the enemy that we are not alone, <laughs> that we are divinely connected to Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are reminded that we use the word of God as a weapon against the enemy to defend our position, that the Bible calls us sons and daughters of God. And that we use the word of God as a weapon to defeat the enemy and temptation. So we understand that the word of God, and catch this, is most effective when it is fully understood. Whew. I need you to tag that tonight, that the word of God is most effective when it's understood. That's why reading the word of the Lord and digesting the word of the Lord is essential so that we understand it and know how to use it. <laughs> Jesus is reminding us that when the enemy attempts to seduce us with his lies, that we have the shining light of the sun, the S-O-N in the earth towards us, and the truth that we have in Jesus. What a friend that we have in Jesus Christ. Aren't you excited tonight that we have Jesus? So we thank the Lord for the lessons in the Lenten season and reminding us that the word of the Lord that proceeds out of the mouth of God is more precious than our daily food our natural food. It is essential for us to continue to eat of the word of God. So here, as we are in the Lenten season and we put into practice the spiritual discipline and exercise of fasting, it is important for us to know that God has put us and placed us on a mission in the earth. And as we extracted from this particular temptation, the enemy, he looked to pull Jesus out of his assignment. There's an assignment that the Lord has given you. There's an assignment. There's an anointing. And there is assistance. I need you to tag that tonight. That there is an assignment there is an anointing and that there is assistance, that there is help in Jesus Christ our Lord. So as we extract from this lesson, the enemy wanted to ruin the mission of Jesus Christ in the earth. Jesus Christ had a mission to the cross. And he had to stay the course to the cross. And the enemy wanted to pull him out of his earthly assignment. See, the enemy tries to throw temptation our way because he wants to pull us off course and take us off of the assignment. But there's an assignment, there's an anointing, and there is assistance. Thank God for assistance in Jesus Christ our Lord. The blood still works, and it never loses its power. So we thank the Lord that tonight we are learning in this text that the enemy tried to convince Jesus Christ to abandon his assignment, to abandon his spiritual work moving towards the cross in order to satisfy his material needs without reference to finding the will of God. Isn't that important for us to note tonight? That we must be spiritually mature. So that the enemy will not pull us away or extract us from our assignments. And that we will not attempt to satisfy this flesh. Or satisfy ourselves with material assets. But we will be in search of finding the will of God for our lives. Tonight, we thank the Lord. That he is reminding us that we may be going through the test, 
but it's leading us to triumph. You are on a road tonight. <laughs> As we are in the Lenten season, we're only a few weeks away from Easter or Resurrection Sunday. We're on the road to triumph. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We're on the road to what is next. So here, we are reminding ourselves tonight that Jesus, in his perfection, Jesus was without sin Jesus is our Savior. Jesus was the, su the Son of the living God. He's the Messiah, the great I Am, the Sovereign. But he, the enemy, attempted to push Jesus to display his divinity. Hmm. How many times does the enemy try to force our hand to show who we really are. Just tell yourself tonight, I have nothing to prove. <laughs> God just wants you to be. You are who you are. You are called. You are chosen. You are appointed. You are assigned. You are anointed. And guess what? You are assisted for such a time as this. You have nothing to prove. You just stand in your place of royalty. You stand in the posture and position again as a Christian in the earth, knowing that you have heaven to support you and heaven to back you in everything that you do. Because again, you have an assignment, you're anointed, and you have assistance. That's it. So tonight, the Lord is increasing us. And he is encouraging us and enriching us throughout the lessons in the Lenten season. So we understand that Jesus Christ, his flesh was hungry. But here, he understood the course of action. And that he could not act independently of the will of God. That Jesus Christ knew that the Spirit led him into the place of necessary hunger. But guess what? He knew that he would be able to fulfill the task. <laughs> so tonight, as we are extracting again from the first temptation of Jesus, Jesus knew that it was necessary because he was going somewhere. Again, if you move to verse 12, it tells us Jesus stepped into the fulfillment of the assignment that was on his life. He stepped into the fulfillment of his ministry. Just please just get through this season because God is taking you to what's next. I need you to tag that tonight. God is taking me to what's next. There's higher heights and deeper depths for you. We thank him tonight. So tonight, Jesus Christ showed us that he was not concerned with material things, but with spiritual food and application. We understand tonight that we do not ignore or negate our assignment. We cannot ignore and negate our humanity. We are in the earth, so we are human, and we also have our divine nature. So Jesus is teaching us here not to overlook our physical needs. We should eat nourishing foods. Right? We should exercise and take care of the temple. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We house the Holy Spirit in our mortal and natural bodies. So we are to take care of our bodies. However, Jesus declares here that you cannot live by bread alone. <laughs> it is coupled with the word of God. As we take care of our natural temples, thank you, Jesus, and as we eat of the word of God, we are walking congruently in the spirit and the natural. 
So God is reminding us here in this particular text that one, we are not alone. And we must understand that we have to dine on the divine. As we take care of our spiritual man, we take care of our natural man. So we, the beloved, God is reminding us throughout this text of how essential it is for us to have a spiritual diet. Just like in our humanity, that if we do not eat natural food, we do not exist. Whew, that's good. Just like if we don't eat our spiritual food, our daily bread, our word of God, spiritually, we digress. We decrease. So God is telling us tonight in the lessons of the Lenten season that we must continue to increase spiritually and mature in this hour and mobilize in this season because he's moving us forward. That's good there. I need you to tag that in the text tonight. So, as we broaden the scope of temptation, it is not just natural food, but it's all material things. If we're honest, the enemy tries to tempt us with money, with cars, with prestige, with education, with many things. And all these things independently are okay. It is, catch this, our attitude towards them that counts. Jesus is telling us here to get our priorities right. He wants to set us up with the right priority. Doing the will of God and being obedient to every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God is essential. And more important than any natural food or any other material thing. So here, even though we go through temptations, and even though we go through trials and tribulations, if we have our priorities in order, <laughs> if we rely on the word of God, we will receive the word's results. Thank you, Jesus. His word is a yes and amen. His promises are yes and amen. So tonight, as we extract again from the first temptation, remember, we are going to begin to ask God to show himself mighty in our lives. We're going to reset in this season of Lent. And that we're going to ask God to show us the direction that he has for us. On the onset of our conversation tonight, in this heavenly discourse, we were reminded to do what? To prepare for our purpose. To be pursuers of the plan of God. And to praise God for the fulfillment of his promises and purpose in our lives. We praise God on a promise. So we have homework tonight. We're going to continue to ask God to show us his plan. Because he said, I know the plans I have for you. They are good and not evil to bring you to an expected end, to give you a hope in the future. What's your expectation? Hmm. What are we expecting God to do? What he's done for others, he'll do for you. But we're going to be pursuers of the plan. Preparers for the purpose. And we're going to praise him for the fulfillment. So again, we're in this place of transition. And he's repositioning us. He's realigning us. He's putting us back to a place where we need to be so we can go forth and be used in a greater capacity. He's stretching us forth and strengthening us in this season. Tag that tonight. He's stretching us forth and strengthening us in this season. So we can put our hands and our feet to action. We know these times are challenging. But we're going to push to pursue. Thank you, Jesus. 
that we're going to use the word of God to enrich us, to encourage us, to uplift us, and to feed us. Lessons in the Lenten season. So tonight, we want to start everything anew and afresh, that we want to reap the harvest that God promised us, we're going to take back what the enemy stole from us, and we will rejoice today because we shall recover it all. So God, again, he's shifting our minds, and he is shifting our awareness of the authority that we have through the word of God. So as we extract these weeks and these lessons in the Lenten season from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, he's shifting our thought process. He's shifting our awareness to who you are in Christ Jesus. That now again we're doing this brain work. And this brain work, this mindset shift, it is necessary. Someone say it is necessary. For us to welcome the new state of mind that we have in Jesus Christ our Lord that's necessary for what's next. Jesus Christ, he had to steal away. The Bible says, and please take some time to read those verses, verses 1 through 11. The Spirit led him to isolation. The Spirit led him into the wilderness. The Spirit knew what was coming. He was moving into the fullness of what he was called to do in the earth. God is moving you in the season into the full manifestation of who you are. You're going to rise and you're going to move to heights that you have never seen before. But we must be pursuers right, of the plan, and we must prepare for the promise. Someone say, I'm in preparation. I need you to tag that tonight. I'm in preparation. We come these Wednesdays again to our Bible studies, and we are reminding ourselves throughout this Lenten season that, again, we are on a course right? We are moving towards Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, when again, Jesus rose with all power in his hands. And that power he is giving to us and reminding us in a, and giving us a sense of awareness of our authority. So he's broadening our brain and he's tuning us in again to the depth of the intelligence that we have in him. That he's getting our minds ready again so that we can be psychologically ready for what's next. Jesus Christ had to steal away into the wilderness. Why? Because he had to get his mind right. He understood that he was going somewhere, that now miracles, signs, and wonders will be on full display in the earth. His humanity had to steal away. He had to allow the Holy Spirit to minister in that hour. God is reminding us because at the end of the text, it said the angels came to minister to him. The Holy Spirit, the comforter that Jesus Christ left here in the earth for us, it's come, it's ministering to you. Why? Because he understands that we have the propensity to hijack our emotions any moment. <laughs> it could be anything frustration, unforgiveness, sadness, disappointment, and the list goes on. He understands our conditions. That's why he's saying consecrate yourselves throughout this Lenten season. Survey our hearts. Survey our minds. And make the necessary adjustments. Realign ourselves so that we again can do things God's way. And what happens? We will receive godly results. So we're taking time throughout this consecration to learn how to control our behavior and not to throw away our thinking capacity and thinking power. Someone say, I am a thinker. I am a thinker. That God wants us to ask questions of the text. 
He wants us to extract everything we need in this season and hour because it is written. Thank you, Jesus. That's his word for us. We are critical thinkers, and we're able to move and strategize according to the plan of God in our lives. The Holy Spirit is intelligent, <laughs> and intelligence resides on the inside of us. So we're surveying so we don't squander. Whew, that's good tonight. We're surveying our hearts. We're surveying our minds. We're surveying our biases so we can change our brain work. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So tonight as we close, we have that set homework. And we are reminding ourselves that we are building ourselves spiritually. We are developing in our minds the conscious behavior that we must Trust in our Christ. We must learn how to master the moment, master our emotions, and rely 100% on the word of God. So we are thankful tonight as he is developing our framework, as he is expanding our theology, as he is reminding us that we must have the framework of obedience, the framework of humility, knowing that God is the greatest power and we shall not be defeated, that this is only a test and the test will lead to the triumph. So we submit to our Savior tonight, knowing that the battle is not ours. The battle belongs to the Lord. The fight is already fixed, and you are on the winning side. So this is just a test. Stand sure, knowing that you can trust God in the midst of temptation. You can trust God in the midst of the test, because God is the greatest power, and we shall not be defeated. Thank you once again for meeting us here this Wednesday evening for our Bible study. Friendship, I love you. We are building a friendship with our community at large. Please share and tag your friend and family member that you can meet us right here every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for our Bible study. Listen, I need you to tag someone with these lessons in the Lenten season. It will bless your life as the Lord is turning. Someone say turning as he's turning he's training thank you Jesus we are in a turning season we are in a transitory season and we are in a training season because why it's leading to our triumph we thank you tonight and we are excited for what's on your life why because you are anointed you are you have assistance through Jesus Christ our Lord and you have an assignment. God bless you. I love you, friendship. I'm looking forward to seeing you right here in the sanctuary on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. The Lord is truly up to something and up to something good as we spring forth in this spring season. I love you. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you again on Sunday morning right here at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church here in the great city of Hamden in the great state of Connecticut. I love you much. God bless you and looking forward to seeing you on Sunday morning.